Pretty books in his spare yes. time. Oh, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. No, no, he's, know hey, books. he's an award-winning uh, author. Of books. Books. He's an award-winning yeah. author. All right. He's also Stan. He's related to Stan Rogers, Canadian folklore. This guy's like the Canadian Bob Dylan. All right. Barrett's Privateers. Banger. Look it up if you haven't heard it. Anyways, it's kind of a cool story. Um, Ian Rogers, when he was a kid, he was a teenager at the time, actually got into this case and started investigating himself. He was like, it's self-proclaimed ufologist loved x-files his dad was in the rcmp so he took it upon amongst himself he borrowed his mom's car drove 200 plus uh miles to ontario to investigate this and then he as an adult goes back into this case and goes over who he thinks possibly done it uh not a huge fan of bob exler no <laughs> not whatsoever uh, this, this uh, documentary really it, points exler being a fucking prick that was just well but oddly enough for only out for himself yeah like oddly enough though the all the ufon like the, the american U, uh mufon and canadian mufon and the rcmp all kind of came to the same uh a thought process when it came to exler like they everybody kind of figured he had his own agenda um apparently with with these ufo cases a lot of people like to like researchers like to claim it for their own and like stake their claim in it and make like this is my case this is what i created he's the one that chased down um fucking uh unsolved mysteries he headlined that he made himself the main figurehead in it and i guess like mufon ontario actually came to the came to the idea that exler probably perpetrated the hoax or was at least part of it um that was what they you know the the process they came to and basically the stuff like he stumbles upon the landing site kind of suspicious and you know anyways kind of a fucking shady bastard yeah. but where it gets interesting is uh bob exler was rounding up a bunch of witnesses to go go ahead and corroborate Labanek's story unfortunately he was grabbing people who had sightings like three four years after and stuck them in with the guardian case which kind of delegitimatized a little bit but one of the people that he found was a woman named susan gillis he ended up bring he he ends up bringing Susan Gillis on that TV show Sightings. I don't know if you guys seen it. It was an old nineties UFO I love that show, show as well. I used to watch it. All so the time. she came on that as an anonymous fucking Guardian witness as well, and actually had claimed to have been abducted by Guardian. So, anyways, that's kind of the last you hear from her because after this whole Guardian thing kind of crash and burns, Bob Exler actually falls out of the UFO game entirely. Yeah, like he's like, he oh, I've, I've had it. it. Everyone's everyone's <laughs> a jerk, and I've had enough of it. Well, pretty much though. Like he basically yeah, claimed so that he was going to write a tell-all book, and he was telling like he was going to sell ex sell extended versions of the tapes. Everything never ended up doing it. The only thing he did was go on like early message boards and bash the Canadians. Apparently, yeah, he said um, they were all assholes, and I was like, oh, I was like, okay, buddy. But so weirdly enough, though, when this uh, when Ian Rogers went back into this case. He ended up, you know, he's trying to track down Susan Gillis. He ends up tracking down one of her relatives. I think it was her grandson. And she left her grandson a letter basically saying, like, open if something happens to me. And he opens this letter and it says, uh, August 1991. I was watching TV around 9 p.m. All I can remember is walking down the road towards the Labanek property where the where the craft was. The next thing I recalled was watching them climbing out of the woods and back into the craft. Then I awoke to the sound of a barking dog. Looked at the clock, it was 10 p.m. Went to see what the dog was barking at and I saw a burst of light flash up into the sky. Mm. Okay, so she supposedly had walked down just under some type of hypnosis, walked down to Labanac property and witnessed this. Yes. And then now Chris Rutowski, the original tapes. Well, and Chris Rutowski, who was one of the original investigators and one of the initial people who got the first round of uh, Guardian uh, documents. And he was in, uh, he was in, or actually, no, he wasn't in UFO Town. But, anyways, he watched UFO Town. And when, she, when he saw the, uh, the grandson pull out that letter, he paused it and he's like, that right there is the exact same envelope and the exact same odd packing tape that my guardian tape, my guardian letter came in. Mm. Right. The Andrew. Yeah. 
Oh, he fo- you that fo- was that, that was the hook right there. Well, your video froze, so I wasn't sure if you were hooking. You oh. just froze. I was like, <laughs> no. So basically, no. pointing to that, this woman is in fact the guardian. Guardian. Yeah. Right. And wow. Kill us. And and not only that, like if you watch UFO Town, it it really points to that the unsolved mysteries and the direction that I would say mainstream media around the guardian case has, has shifted that case it there is something there but not in the sense of how unsolved mysteries portrays it because there's also this 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 area seemingly had like a ufo flap flap uh, for yeah. three years of like of you have so many n- nothing there none of them all corroborate the guardian uh some do but others have just as amazing accounts of being like yeah there was helicopters like non-stop none of them are low flying but it's like you know, non-stop late at night they were having lights suspended outside their windows as kids where it was like it would just illuminate their whole room and as they went to the window the light would just turn off and something would leave silently like this this whole like west carlton area was for that time seemingly under some sort of crazy ufo flap that just kind of gets drowned out in the guardian case and the one thing I will point out that could argue for and against the flap, I guess, is the fact that, like, this is CARP. Like, how far away is CARP from Ottawa? Not not too far. Not very far. That's our nation's capital. How many fucking mm. military bases does Ottawa have? It's a good question. Right? So you at think least one. If, at, at least, least one. Gonna be getting, well, at least, right? Like, they, yeah. uh, it's going to have a large military presence. So either these helicopters could be possibly doing, like, military drills or that's what's attracting the UFOs to CARP in that area. Right, because we yeah. know that UFOs like to visit military bases. Well, okay, so plus they so, have Zadif and Bunker. Okay, well, back to my point that I started the show with. So, if you know, we always, everyone always says, like, I, you know, like, oh, I, you know, there's always a joke that UFOs visiting visiting Earth. It's like, and then it shows uh, the map of Earth, and it's just America, right? Because <laughs> they're like, oh, that's where all the ones. But my thing is, I'm like, maybe that, like just the big ones that we know about are there but like we've talked about our previous case files about possibly them having teams that are better at extracting these crafts right so if something went down and say say we collected this craft in in 89 or whatever uh that they're claim maybe these this video setage set up and i wonder if if we if it's like a piloted we're piloting the crafts and this person knew that this is the time where we test these crafts uh, and had time to go set up um, cameras to capture it because the capturing of the footage either tells me I'm like, okay, well, someone either knew something was happening, right, and had to be out there for a time, or they just caught it by happen chance. But the happen chance doesn't really make sense with the rest of the stuff that the Guardian uh, sent off. Chance? And if you look at the fact, yeah, that's I just made that word up. Happenstance. Okay. Right? Is that what I'm trying to say? There we go. But. Yeah, you know, if, if we, we to believe that this, this <laughs> a little happen this, chance, yeah, a little happen yeah. chance, well, happen uh, chance makes perfect sense. You think about it, right? Uh, but if if the guardian is There's this a chance, if, it might happen. Yeah, it does. Is this grandma? It perfect. Time. Right? It it would make sense to like we should be Seems. digging more in her. But it it definitely for me it's like the guardian case as you the narrative because the narrative is always portrayed of the unsolved mysteries narrative. And I think there's there's more to this one than that. Like that to me is a sh- like a shady person trying to steal a narrative and then make it his own, even though something weird was happening here. And if he just did it properly and collected this information as independently, he may have found other interesting things rather than taking all these sightings from one time and like twisting them into this narrative of his these own two narrative. Events. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So by like, by his he just did shitty investigative work in my opinion eichler eichler cool <laughs> so who is it well i think it's the grandma 100 percent. i think it's Sue's. Sue's the grandma Sue's gillis. I think Sue's, 100%. Sue's gillis is the guardian yeah um Susan. and i i think i think this area was in a ufo flop whether it's tested crafts that we already have Right, like if you think about it, like okay, remember the Avro era? We've talked before. Put greatest, Canada on the map. Greatest right? craft like, ever constructed. Right, and we 
we, the greatest craft in all of the world. Yeah, well, the government, the Canadian government, got together and they said, like, hey, like we're disbanding this, we're not doing it, and in order to protect the secrets of the, they, they say in the documents, like of the classified metals and materials used in the craft, they destroyed every craft and every blueprint. So it's like we don't even know how we made it anymore. But like when you start to think of like like fucking Canada, we had at the time in the 60s, the fucking best jet that you could make. And we just were like, scrap it. We got, don't anyone. We don't want that's anyone to know to, about that's the what they want metals. to tell you. Right. That's what they want to and, tell and, you. We still have secret it. materials. Buddy, we got but like, all that's, that's, we got rocketeer shit. Fact. We got all of it. Right. That's all, fact. So it's like all UFOs me... are based on Canadian old, old Canadian military technology. We said we got rid of. Yeah. But mm-hmm. but maybe but it's we didn't. They're hid. They're hiding in the bottom of the Sadifan bunker. But maybe it's one of those things where it's why like, it was decommissioned. You know, we were ahead because we had recovered crafts. Maybe more countries recover crafts than we know about. Right. Because if you think about these land masses, especially like Bob Lazar talking about, you know, digging one up. Like if you think about the land masses of Canada, like it would make sense that if multiple countries are hit, like Canada land mass, pretty good odds of a UFO coming down in Canada. Like <laughs> I know the world's a huge place, but, you know, if countries it's almost like they would have the second best chance, biggest, second best chance of landing <laughs> in our yeah. land mass. So it's like, you know, I kind of started to question of like how many of these objects have we picked up and maybe this technology is just further development of you know what we were working on with the avro arrow and whatever these secret materials and secret metals are uh that or classify i shouldn't say secret classified metals and classified materials um are and we're just we're just further testing with them and that's what these people are seeing are these test flights that was kind of what i I was thinking i can dig it Maybe not aliens, but like alien technology, right? Maybe perhaps maybe? recovered, defunct, yeah, Ex- excavated, like Bob Lazar said. Yeah, that's still to this day. Or just an the- excavator, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I'll never forget when Bob Lazar was on Rogan, and he's like, "Yeah, we excavated one," and no one elaborated further on it. I was like, "What do you mean they excavated from where?" Because no one asked any more questions. Totally knew he wasn't that excited. But maybe, but maybe that was like we, so. We, like just saying that, like excavated. Maybe, maybe there is a joint task force with the United States, and we have recovered one in Canada. Like maybe the, no, no, we're, we're one. Buddy, did you not read the manifesto? We have partnered with Red China and Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Too, <laughs> too maybe unlikely. that's what unlikely the fucking allies. that's what the, the the seven of spades fucking said, right? <laughs> no, the the deep and bunker was drilled so deep that they actually found it. that's <laughs> what <where>, that's. <laughs> China? <laughs> it just connects right there. That's not where the joke was going, but I like that better. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's, that's, that's what you're saying. <laughs> they dug it so deep, they dug it dug it straight through the earth. Popped out in China. God, yeah. case closed. I get it. Yeah. And that's yeah, where the lizards like are coming it. from. And that's no, that, that's it's how China's done. gonna invade us eventually through that tunnel. Fuck. Ooh. Yeah. So that's why we decommissioned it. We blew it up. We're like, we can't. We, <laughs> Sealed it up. We got to sever ties. <laughs> we got to sever tunnels with China. Um, it, it's it's an it's an interesting case. I would recommend if you're interested in this one at all to check out. Watch the unsolved mysteries because who doesn't love a good narrated episode by Bobby Stacks? Uh, but then check out uh, UFO Town by CBC because it is gets it's very it's very interesting and a very uh, well done interesting take on. Uh, this kind of episode. Um, we got a theory of the week. I believe we had a review. Yeah, you got there. Oh, that's right. Review. That's right. I do yeah. have it up right now. Um, this there want, it is. You want, you want an easy, easy way to get theory of the week? Easy. This is the easiest, probably the easiest way to get it because not a lot of people utilize this. Write a nice five star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and. Uh, we get an email notification when people send. You can't. Them. So you actually can't them. write. You can't re- write reviews on Spotify, but leave that yeah, five star Apple, regardless. Yeah, Apple Podcasts, and uh, we get a notification. Maybe yours to get read, and you'll be the theory of the week this week. Homegrown uh, eighty eight uh, gave us five star review. Love the banter. These Canadians are great. From not too far away from Wisconsin, 
I await with great anticipation for every episode. The combination of well-researched facts, humor, and something off the wall new theories is awesome. Would love to have a new episode daily, though. I realize that's asking a lot. Uh, <laughs> LOL. Keep up the good work, guys. Andy K, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Life Kenosha. will find a way. Kenosha. So, thank you, Andy K. Uh, you are the theorite of the week. Legend. And if you're not supporting the show by now, you know where to go. AlienTheorist.com. You got to hit that support tab. Choose Patreon or Supercast. Get the case files early and ad-free. Access to all our bonus stuff. And then we read your beautiful names live on the podcast. Mess most of them up. Yet we read them. Where did Andrew go? Anyways, Andrew is going to start. Andrew is going to start it off. I got it. Braden's going to do it. it. We got frog mask. Uh, Captain Jive, Justice, um, Josh Renaud, uh, top tier, top tier, top Woo-hoo. tier. Josh Renaud, thank you, Josh Renaud. You're a beauty. Uh, we got Halloween, uh, Kevin Kokos, uh, Christina Jordan, and Dimitri. We got Carol M. Velasquez. Ryan Morse, Brian Inks, Ince, Incy. See, that? that's what you get. Tyler Gillum, Marcus Fafield, Cell. Sometimes I got to double check them before I read because I'm trying to fuck me. <laughs> Cell Fliparachi. This is a cool name. Lauren Andrews, Bigsby Starboner. <laughs> Goes up on their totally pledge. Real. Christopher. Totally real name. And just underscore Casey, thank you very much for supporting the show. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. See you in after hours. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation, you get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys, enjoy the next video.